Hello everyone, my name is Sean Robinson. I'm the president of Indian Trail DECA and a Leadership Council Ambassador, and welcome to another Next Level episode of the Competitive Excellence Series. Today's episode is how to prep for a role play. We'll go over the entire process of prepping for a role play, from the minute you sit down in your prep room until you're standing in front of your judge. The key to role plays is efficiency. For individual events, you only have 10 minutes to prepare for your role play, so using your time wisely is essential. To efficiently use your time, you have to have a good idea of what you're going to do the second you sit down in your prep room. The first step I like to take when looking at a role play is writing down my performance indicators. Performance indicators, or PIs, are specific points that need to be mentioned in the role play, so it's important that we know what they are and what they mean. I like to write my PIs down before the role play because it helps me develop my solution and know what the key details of the role play are. After writing down my performance indicators, I move on with the role play. I like to create me and judge sections. In the me section, I write down my job description, employer, and my relationship to the judge. In the judge section, I write down the judge's name, their job title, and any other relevant information that I could use in the role play. After creating my me and judge sections, I move on to analyze the situation. I pull out key important details that I can use throughout my presentation. I then look to see if there's a problem, and I look for its causes. Then, I look to see if solutions are provided, such as options one, two, and three, or if I have to come up with a solution myself. At this point, I start to plan my solution and how I plan to present it. Now that I have a solution, I like to create bullet points that I can glance at during my presentation. At this point, I also like to revisit my performance indicators and see how I can weave them into my presentation. Remember, while they are listed in numerical order, they do not need to be presented in that order. So if it makes sense to mix them up, please feel free to do so. I like to create bullet points in the order that I would like to present them during the presentation, so that I just have to glance down and look at them to recenter myself if I need to during my presentation. The last thing I do before going into a role play is creating extra materials to give to the judge. These are physical things such as handouts, flyers, business cards, sample information, or graphs. By giving the judge something physical, you not only make your role play more memorable, but you make yourself more credible as well. One of the most common things I do is create a business card so that the judge can reference back to me at a later date and we can set up a follow-up for my solution. Remember, when prepping for a role play, efficiency is key. Step one is to write down your performance indicators. Step two is to create your me and judge sections. Step three is to analyze the situation and start to create a solution. Step four is to create your bullet points and revisit your performance indicators. And step five is to create your extra materials. Now let's put these five steps to practice. Let's look at a sample role play. This is the 2019 Principles of Hospitality and Tourism role play. There are four performance indicators and we need to understand what all of them mean. Number one is to explain the nature of positive customer relations. Basically, we need to explain what it means to have positive interactions and reputation with customers. Number two is to demonstrate a customer service mindset. You need to show that you are there for the customer and that you are there to help them with whatever they need. Number three is to handle customer client complaints. You need to address the issues brought forward by customers and deal with them appropriately. Number four is to show empathy for others, and I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. Remember, PIs do not need to be presented in numerical order. Here's a continuation of the previous sample role play. If you need to pause the video and read the information for yourself, feel free to do so. After reading the information, I created my me section. I'm a sales rep at Travel America, which is a travel company that does group trips across the continental US, and I found a concerning message from Pat Smith in my voicemail about the final cost of a trip to New York. And then for our judge section, the judge's name is Pat Smith, so we will address them as Mr. or Mrs. Smith. We have worked with them for 16 years, and we plan their annual senior trip to New York for their marketing program. After creating our me and judges section, we can move on with the role play. If you need to take a second and pause the video to read this information for yourself, please feel free to do so now. After reading this section, I pulled out a few important details that I think I will need to use during my presentation. First, it's a five-day, four-night trip with hotel, ground transportation, two Broadway shows, meals, local tours, and entry fees all covered in the cost. The initial budget was $1,200 per person, but due to airfare increases, 
uh, this per person budget increased to $1,250, which led to a $2,500 additional cost. And Pat Smith wants us to make up this difference. During our meeting today, there will be three options for us to choose from. After looking at the details of our problem, we can begin to select one of the three options as our solution. If you need to take a second and pause the video to read the three options for yourself, feel free to do so. The three options are as follows. Number one is to drop a Broadway show, number two is to cut off a night, and number three is to take a coach bus instead of flying. These options all have their pros and cons, and we can use them to pick the best alternative. Number one, dropping a Broadway show saves $100 per person, and we are already seeing a show. But the group doesn't get to see a second show, and planning an alternative can be messy. Number two, cutting off a night saves $60 per person, but planning five days of activities in four days can be a headache, and you have to rebook the flights. For number three, taking a coach bus instead of flying saves a lot of money, over $200 per person, but it takes more days because driving is slower than flying. This also means that you need to rebook hotels and you have less time for activities. We can use these pros and cons to deduct that the option number one is probably the best path forward. At this point, you've probably used five to seven minutes of your time and you can begin to review the information you already have. You can plan out how your role play is gonna go and you start to work in your performance indicators. Remember, these are bullet points, not a script, because if you write a script, you'll read the script and you won't make eye contact with your judge. The, my bullet points are as follows. Number one, my name is Sean Robinson and I'm a sales rep from Travel America. Number two, my judge's name is Mr. or Mrs. Smith and then I included the details of the trip. Number three, performance indicator one, explain the nature of positive customer relations. At this point, I'm going to explain why it's important to have good relations with customers, because it's good for business. Performance Indicator 2, display customer service mindset, and Performance Indicator 4, show empathy. I'm going to show that I'm there to help and that I understand the situation. And then for Performance Indicator 3, handle customer complaints, and at this point, I'm going to present my solution. Remember, you're going to want to present all three options, but make sure you recommend one of them. For us, we're going to be recommending option 1. After choosing a solution, we can begin to create materials that we can use during our presentation. Some examples of materials to use are flyers, business cards, sample information, and graphs. For example, for our role play, I would create a handout saying why you should choose option one, removing a Broadway show from your schedule. Then I would include a couple of the pros, such as cost reduction, the group is already seeing a Broadway show, and time can be used to plan an alternate activity. I might even draw Lady Liberty if I feel like it. The judges will understand if I'm not Picasso. Another idea is to create a business card with your name, job, position, and a fake phone number. You can use this to help create a bond with your judge and even set up a follow-up meeting if needed. However, I would not create a business card if you already know your judge, if they're your boss, your manager, or a customer you've worked with before. And that's how you prep for a role play. Remember to use your five steps and to be as efficient as possible. I'm Sean Robinson, and thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Competitive Excellence Series.